things you have to learn is what makes winners win. You see, if Gor Mahia plays against Barcelona and Gor Mahia wins, you think it can't win, eh? But should Gor Mahia win? We'll say words like, hey, they were lucky. Ama? How many of us are expecting Gor Mahia to win against Barcelona? If against Shaka Ruturi, we don't even chance with our sports pesa investment. If they play against Barcelona, we, we are even prepared for losing. Huh? Why is it that we don't believe Gor Mahia can beat Barcelona? That's why Sisi or Africa Sushi Davitu za kukimbia. Na see 100 meters, kukimbia the whole day, marathon. <laughs> those are things we can beat those Spaniards or Barcelona people. But how is it that we have come to a place where we expect Barcelona to win every time? Why is it? I want to teach you something here that victory is a science. Victory is a science. It's not a chance, it's a science. Hello? When you see Barcelona winning every time, it's because they've learned the science of winning. Huh? When we were young, Kurale Maboy Sulkotuna Itamalava, you can tell I never passed to join them. And these, these are people who could have 10 girlfriends, and every girlfriend felt they were the only ones. They had that gift of convincing people. And whenever you asked them, hey, manzi, nasi, unakuwa gome lobo yu anamadema na kombia? No, kukatia is a science. There are things women love. Now, me, I thought uh, women loved this, so I invested so much in that, but anakombia zi. There are things women love. This is how you talk to them. This is how you approach them. Yeah? I never tried much, so my ex, my current, is here. Ushe Shanga, I'm my employees wa Jonabi. They always have the hottest girls. <laughs> hot, hot, hot girls. You know, there are some of us who think we are beautiful. Then there are those who are beautiful. You know, there are some of us who have lazimo jipe confidence. I am fearful. You have to confess. <laughs> I am. And then you go and see the kind of people who fall for these people, and then it hits you that it's a science. Ama. There are people who have taken time to invest their energy to learn what do women like, and so they just set themselves that way, and they keep getting women over and over and over again. Life is not any different. You can learn winning from winners. And I want to teach you some of the things I've learned about winning. It says, thanks be to God who always leads us into triumph. Meaning that God is so interested in your winning that he wants to lead you in a path that you will triumph. And so if you are here and you've got gifts, you've got talents, you've got skills, I want to teach you how to live a victorious life. Hello? Hello? You can live a victorious life because God is interested. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. And why is the triumph life of a believer important? Because you never influence the world from a point of being a victim. You influence the world from a point of being a victor. When I walk the streets of Nairobi, so nangim to meva t-shirt, yamsana itwa Mike Okude. Player washa karuturi. Nonata mnamcheka. And that guy is an equal footballer. No namto meva t-shirt ya Ronaldo. Messi. Mbono utake kuva t-shirt ya Mike Okude. Imagine umeva Okude. Because the name Okude does not speak what? Victory. Hello? True or false? So God says it's from a point of triumph that he makes manifest the savor of his knowledge 
by us in every place. So the victory of a believer is the aroma of that believer. If a believer is victorious in a particular area, he begins to influence the world in that area. Now the problem has been, and this is the difference between opinion and expertise. Opinion is knowledge without victory. There are people, and I see them so much on Facebook, they teach us, mtu anongia mambo za Bible, mambo za Bible, na hata bibi yake ndangi hata kwa kanisa yake. Hata girlfriend yake. Lakini inda mejaza. He has knowledge, but nobody even can use that knowledge to go take a shower. Experience, expertise, is when that knowledge, that person, has been involved in the journeys of victory. Hello? And that is what I want to bring you to, so that you don't become a person who is known for having what? Opinions. You can be born anywhere. And I love what Bill Gates says. Bill Gates says, being born poor is not your choice. But dying poor is your choice. That is Bill Gates. He says, being born poor is not your choice. But dying poor is your choice. And so, for us as believers, it is the journeys we take with God, conquering fields that gives us aromas for the world to come and smell. I struggled becoming a Christian because I never saw triumphant Christians. I loved uh, rap music because it made sense. The people who did it and sang it had more than the people who are walking around peddling scriptures. And so I struggled becoming a Christian because the Christian life was not symbolized by victory. And we as believers, we must get to know that there are principles to becoming a victor. So that your t-shirt or kude can now be worn. You know some of us on Atembea Gamta wakisema, you know you've stepped on my Calvin Klein. Nambona wo sianzishe yako. Calvin Klein ni mtu. Hugo Boss ni mtu. Giorgio Armani ni mtu. Nini ni mbaya watu wakiva Amos Mwema. But why is it that we pride ourselves about wearing other people's designers? Why can't you have your own designers? There is something we want to learn, and that's what I want to teach you. Look at this. Colossians chapter number 2. There are just five simple principles. Colossians chapter number 2 says this. Look at this. It says, Having despoiled, disarmed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The first thing you've got to know is that success and victory is a disarming process. Christ could not make a show of what he has not disarmed. Success is a path of dispossessing people. Hello? If you do not have a dispossessing mind, having spoiled, meaning before he spoiled, these principalities and powers were triumphing over people, right? And so for you to triumph, you must be ready to spoil, to disarm, to confront and contend and to disarm principalities and powers. And that is to tell you the territory you want to prosper already has a challenge waiting for you. Hello? If you are looking for a territory that has no challenge, you are in the wrong place. Victory is for dispossessors. Victory is for conquerors. God had to make sure he had disarmed before he could show. I challenge you this Sunday morning that God is interested in how you dispossess and your willingness to dispossess people. In every industry that you enter, principalities and powers will want to take on you head on. It is a challenge of every believer to know that victory comes through dispossession. Hallelujah. 
study. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter number 5. And this is the victory. I believe verse number 11. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. That is to tell you everything that you see in the world can be overcome. There is nothing that you see in the world that cannot be overcome. Anything you see in the world, it can be overcome. There is nothing that you see in the world that cannot be overcome. It's, it's, is it four? Four or five there. And this is the victory. And this is the victory that we have. That we have overcome the world through our faith. So what God wants to see is to see your faith being activated into the journey of overcoming the world that you live in. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Because if you do not do that, part one, then you're going to have a difficult time in enjoying your Christian life. If anybody wants to prosper in this life, he must be prepared. He must be prepared to engage the principles of faith that enable you to overcome our world. Faith is what you need for the overcoming life. And if your faith is right, victory is guaranteed. Faith is not guessing. Faith is not positive optimism or relativism. Faith is when you rise up and take that place and the word of God for what it takes, the promise of God for what it says, and using that promise to see the fulfillment of God in your life. Point number one. Victory is the manifestation of our faith. Without faith, 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. For whatsoever is begotten of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Hello? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory. So you cannot be a born-again Christian and the world is overcoming you, and yet you say that you have been born of God. Hello? So either two things. Either you are nature is not true or your nature is not correct. Because if you have been born of God, that is your nature, whatever is born, you take the nature of what has given birth to you. A mango tree is called a mango tree because it came from a mango fruit, right? A mango seed. And so you take the nature of what you are born. So either you have not been born of God or you have been born of God, but you have not been nurtured, that is cultivated or trained in the ways of the nature that you are born into. And that's why you can be born a prince, but if you are not raised up in a palace, you will never enjoy and know the powers you have as a prince. And so I want to give you five winner's principles that can guarantee you victory in any area of your life. The first one is this. If you want to be victorious in your life, the first thing you've got to learn is don't be too soft on yourself. Don't be too soft on yourself. Victory begins in your training. They say train hard, win easy. Most of us in our journey of pursuing progress, we are too soft on ourselves. And we expect life and success and the devil to be softer on us. But let me tell you something. If you want to be victorious, you must not be soft on yourself. Some of us cannot even survive sacrificing anything. We are so much comfort seekers that we take the low level of the lowest place. Because for you to go higher, you need to rise in your thought, in your ethics, in your mind. And because we do not want the journey of sacrifice, we are too soft on ourselves. And that's why we never start anything. For you to do anything significant in your life, you must be ready to start. And starting is hard. Starting is demanding. 
Starting is tedious. Starting is taxing. Starting requires for you to adjust the way you live. But starting is not the hardest part. Once you start succeeding, it requires more readjustment. Am I talking to somebody here? And so the first thing you've got to learn is not to become too soft on yourself. The book of Luke chapter number 15, the Bible talks of two types of children. One child is too soft on himself. He sits at home, does his homework, does everything, and then he goes and says, Father, I have served you all my life and you have done nothing for me. And many a times we have Christians who say, oh God, I have been a good Christian, but how come my life is not progressing? But then there is another son, hello, who when he went to the father and said, give me. And when he went from there, he took the money that he had, he went away, he moved from that place, he lost all the money that he had, he went to work for a guy who wanted to make him a pig, whatever, riara, and he was almost eating with the pigs. And from that particular place, he said, I will arise, and I will go, and I will say. Some of us, we do not even have an I in the first place. We will say, Akianani na vile napiti avitu mob. Nobody even cares. I came to church having not eaten anything. Nobody cares. And we treat care as if it meets our need. And sometimes we do not know there are people who can love you to death. They can be so nice, but they are loving you to poverty. They are training you to be too soft on yourself until you never learn self-reliance. But the role of discipline is to train you self-reliance. You must learn to be hard on yourself. Because there are some of us, we are too hard on others and too soft on ourselves. But the victory life demands that you must teach yourself to become too hard on yourself. Train hard. Read hard. You are in school, study hard. Make yourself indispensable in the field that you're in by the amount of input you make towards improving that particular place. You cannot afford to be soft on yourself and you want to become a victor in life. Victims are people who are too soft on themselves. Those who win are people who are too... Oh... They have so many, I will arise, I will go, I will say. They don't wait for people to will them to action, to warm them to action. You need to be serious. There is nothing that disturbs me like the work ethic I see around men. You go to a kinyozi and you go to a salon. 6.30, the ladies are at the salon, cleaning it, dusting it, making it ready. 9.30, wona pigia kinyozi wako, eh, mse jana ni mekani kia una game ya bayen. Ha? Ha? The work ethic of a man is always, they are so pleasure driven, they have got no sense of purpose. And sir, what is happening now is that ladies are beginning to take over offices that used to be controlled by men because you are so pleasure driven. We have no sense of intentionality, no sense of purpose that you have got to sleep as long as you are sleepy. Who's, who, who taught us that? Who trained us that way? Who trained us to be mastered by sleep? And the Bible says it clearly. A little sleep, Proverbs 24, a little slumber and poverty, meaning the softness of your bed is the strength of the bandit called poverty. And those people who are soft on themselves, you will find them. Have you ever gone and talked to people who are poor, 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 and they have an excuse why they are late, late, late? By the time ni alafu ni nini, and they need help, but they have a reason why they cannot be able to make it. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The needier you are the earlier you should be able to rise up and get yourself there. Do you know that there are people who could get healed in the Bible because they arrived first in the water? Eh? Yeah. And it's not that they were better. Sick people lying beside a water. And they arose and they could throw themselves in the water until one man stayed there for 38 years because he could not get there first. I get concerned. 
A woman comes to around Jesus, a crowd of people. This woman has suffered for 12 years, not 12 hours. Oh, Pastor, I have such a toothache. I couldn't make it to church. This woman has suffered for 12 years. The Bible says she pressed through the crowd while she was bleeding. If you are too soft on yourself, you will say, oh, I, I am so bleeding, I cannot press through this crowd. She had money, she had spent all her money. She had networks, she could have spent all her networks. But when she heard about Jesus, the Bible says she pressed through the crowd. And as she was pressing through the crowd, and she's bleeding still, she was only healed after she touched, not before. And she did not touch the shoulder. Oh. She did not touch the waist. She touched the hem. You cannot be too soft on yourself. Hello? You didn't become a Christian to be mummied. To be sissied. Oh, Pasi, you didn't say hi to me. How come, Pasi, I've never come to your place? Hello? The first rule of people who become victorious in life, they decide from the first day they are not going to be too soft on themselves. They are going to get the job done. They are going to get it done and get it done. If it means walking in the rain, they will walk in the rain. If it means standing in the sun, they will stand in the sun. If it means making phone calls, they'll make phone calls. But because you're too soft on yourself, imagine anin memkola jashika simu. And immediately now you are angry, now you are disturbed that people are not answering your call. You're not that important. You come and we puff your ego up and we tell you, oh, you are an ego. Ego don't fly with chicken. But let me tell you, for you to be an eagle, you must do eagle stuff. They say the lifespan of an eagle, at the middle stage of the eagle, the eagle goes through what the snake goes through in terms of metamorphosis to get rid of its outer skin. That eagle challenged by the hardening of life. It discovers that I am at a transitional point that if I do not change, I will never grow to my full size. So the eagle will take its beak and go to the hardest rock and begin to hit its beak so that that outer crust will fall off and it will hit it and you will see blood coming out as it hits that beak and hits it and hits it and hits it and hits it and then it will come to its legs and it will begin to scratch off on that rock and some of us, because we've never scratched on anything, hello, other than when you're doing your facial to get rid of that pimple so that your pen pal in Sweden can write you and see your true face. If you want to soar higher with the eagles, take your beak and hit it on something. Take your hands and beat them on something. Come back to us on Sunday, stained by the blood of trial. Not theories. Hello? How many of us have watched Shoshank Redemption? If you've not watched it, uh, repent of your sins. The man is arrested and he's gone to prison. And while he's in prison, he, 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 he begins to dig on the wall of the prison for about 10 years. He's just digging on the wall of the prison. He digs through the wall and gets the escape. But people always celebrate the digging. But the digging was not the hardest part. It was the two-kilometer swim in the sewage that was to get him into freedom. Some of us, we are willing to dig, but when we run into the sewage, you say, mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm not all this, mm -mm, mm -mm, I know. I always tell people, money is proud. That is why proud people can't be rich. Money is proud already. Pesa in a maringo, it's proud. That's why in a, in a torokaga. Money is proud. So for you to get it, you must be humble. Success requires you to humble yourself. And the root word for humble is humiliate yourself. Man, for you to make it in life, there are some humiliating things you will have to do. Oh, you cannot walk at the level of your, oh, you know I've got two degrees and one master's and all this. You're going to remain jobless. There are people who have been employed in this country because they dressed up in the morning and were willing to hold something. They were humiliated, but they got employed. Oh, 
They stood outside on the road, kindly employ me. I have a BA in this and this and this and this. But if they are too soft on themselves, they'll have said, I'll just send my CV and wait for anybody by any chance to call me. They stood out there and for hours standing out there and people took photos of them and they were sharing them. But guess what? At the end of the day, now that person could be sitting here in church. You don't know them. If you are too soft on yourself, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do that. You are Mr. Big Bucks, Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Big Attitude, and you've got nothing. Secondly, the first secret to victory, if you do not get this right, there is no other thing you're going to get right. You cannot afford to be soft on yourself. You can't. You can't. Because the devil is not soft on you. He is recruiting principalities, and he's sending them all at you. Hello? Secondly, number two, for you to become victorious in life, you must become ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. A-M-B-I-D-E-X-T-R-O-U-S. Ambidextrous. Success requires you to put together a constellation of principles. You cannot be a one-eyed person. They say that this is the art of using both brains to work. James chapter number 2 begins to introduce this principle of faith and work. Because there are some people who are dexterous, so they say, me, I am, I am, a, I am a faith guy. And the other person is me, I am a work guy. And the Bible says faith without works is what? Is what? Is what? And also work without faith is what? Is dead. And so many a times you find that there are people who need to bring themselves to a place where they are applying and finding multitudes of principles that they can employ in order to win. And the dexterity is the process of growing the aspects of your brain that you're not naturally good at. Most of us are right-handed people. But there are people who are naturally left-handed. And so most of us may be left-handed brains and right-handed brains. But for you to be able to become a victor, you must be able to work with both your brains. You must be able to employ the principles of faith and the principles of work. You must know what does the word say about this. What is the faith principle about what I'm doing? What is the thing I can do to make this thing work from the word of God? And after doing the faith principles, you also go and get the work principles and begin to ask yourself, what is the work ethic that I'm required to know? What are the marketing strategies that I'm required to know? You can't go wanting to win in the marketplace with Bible verses. The Bible verses builds you. Huh? And that is why when Jesus is sending the disciples in the book of John, not John, Matthew chapter number 10, he tells these people, hey guys, guess what? I give you power and authority. And the people go, woo! And then he tells them the sad news. I am sending you as sheep amongst wolves. And they go, ah. And many a times you do not know you may have the power, but if you are a sheep, the wolves will have the better of you. You may have the authority, but if you are a sheep, the wolves will have the better of you. So what does God tell the sheep? Go ahead and be a sheep and enjoy sheepish life. He tells that sheep, you've got to be ambidextrous. You must find animals that are able to fight against wolves. So he tells the sheep, if you're going to survive in a world full of wolves, you cannot remain a sheep. Grow in yourself the serpent, grow in yourself the dove, and make sure when the serpent, when the wolf comes to meet you, he can see a sheep on the outside, but there is a snake on the inside, there is a dove on the inside. You have learned the principles of life that are able to enable you to navigate the terrains of life. Ambidexterity. Simple-minded people do stupid things. Stupid things. Hello? The problems of your life require a shift and a mental aptitude. The prodigal son never left the pit because he was the son of a rich man. He left the pit when something happened in his mind. He came to his senses. If something can come to your senses, if I can speak to your senses and I trigger something in your senses, I will have liberated you. I will have liberated you 
from any cave that you're in today. You can have woken up about to eat with the smallest of the smallest on the earth. But something happens in your mind and you arise from where you are. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter number 2 says this, that a man of God must not strive, but he must be able to teach so that he may liberate those at whom are taken captive by the devil at his own will. And the only way he can liberate people from being taken captive by the devil is when he does what? He gives them a mental shift so that they stop opposing themselves. Some of us cannot do much because before you make a decision, you go through a roller coaster. Unaanza na masai, kakia nani hii ya 2016 hii? Hii 2017 hii? Hii ndo the year of nini? Hii 2016? Ori baba baba baba. Hasa yu ni roller coaster kwa hapa juyo ni tunakuja 31st kesha. Alafu tunaono meinu wa vumbi. Hasa yu ni January, hapo bado tunafanya prayer week. The Bible says in the book of uh, Numbers that Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. That word spirit is attitude, mindset. And they said, we were well able. So your ability is determined by your attitudes. Your attitudes determine the heights of your abilities. There are small people, small able people with big attitudes who achieve big feats. And yet there are people with bigger attitudes and with bigger abilities but small attitudes and they achieve small feats. Hello? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, by the look of things, I'm starting to be concerned. Hello? Shape your brain. You cannot get into business without studying business. Hello? Ambidextrous. Winners are thinkers. And these are people who think in various dimensions. Thirdly, on that and be dexterity, I'll give you this. No principle works alone. No principle works alone. Prayer is a principle. Giving is a principle. Saving is a principle. Reading is a principle. But you cannot just take one principle. No, na Kimbia na Nairobi. Oh, you know me, I'm a prayer warrior. That's why prayer warriors, most of the time, they are broke. And they are single. Because they are busy praying and they've not worked on themselves. So I'm a omba. Nyole me kuangumu ka still wire. Madhundozi me tokelezea. Then anasema, you know, I've discovered men in the church do not love spiritual people. No. The Bible told us we shall walk on scorpions and serpents and they shall do us no harm. But it didn't mean that we have got to tolerate mediocrity. If you do not pay attention to yourself, why should we? Eh? Why should we? <laughs> Thirdly, the third thing about winners The third principle of victory is making moves without waiting for waves. Making moves without waiting for waves. Many a times, many of us are waiting for the wave to come before we make the move. But winners are people who began moving. And when the wave came, it found them moving. Winning is like running a relay. When you are running a relay, you don't start running when you catch the baton. You begin to run before the baton is brought to you. Hello? And so people will see you on the queue. You're waiting. And you'll begin to see the other person is approaching. And you'll begin to take off and run. And there are people who will be looking at you and wondering, why are you running and you have nothing that you're holding? But you have got to learn to make moves without waiting for waves. Because victory begins by people who are willing. They already see themselves as victors. And so they begin to make room and go for things and go for greater things, even without the money to suggest that they can afford them. You will see them shopping in places and looking for things and prices of things, and yet they don't even have the money. 
Do you know they say that 70% of people who win the lottery become poor within five years? Because these are people who, as they were playing, they never thought they would win. The, the, they, they thought they would win, but not the big bucks. Then all of a sudden, they win 165 million shillings. All of a sudden, in Amihitu Kambani, Kunas Chanawa Brown, he gets three. Eh? Then in Amihitu Sijui Wapi, Anambati Kukona Shamba, he goes and buys. Anapata ni kuawa watu. Anambu wapo ni airport tumenunua kwanza. Apo, apo ni airport tumenunua. Ama ni yachi. See, those are the stories. The next thing unasikia menda menunua perfumes. Now, after six years, you come back and find him. You wonder, what happened to this guy? It is not that the money was not good enough to liberate him from a life of labor. It is that when the money came, he had not made moves in a way that that money could have gone and channeled him to profit in that direction. So when the money came, it found him static. And so because he was static, that is the time when I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of grandmother. I'm going to give you a little bit of Alego anaka na shoshu na try kumu explain ya 165 million Kenya shillings. Ana shanga, ah, yo ni nini? Ana kwambia nunua ngombe. Alego, ngombe zetu ni pembe zinatoa. So, pembe imeanza kutoka. Now you want to be a farmer. You've never loved farming. Ata ile tukifanya from Sana D8, 4K Club, hau kukua. Sa hile lazimu itu unajua, the world is going towards farming. Dangote said, Bill Gates said. Na wewe farming umeingia. You've never learned, you've never studied, you've never researched. Umendo menunwa mangombe, umezileta hapu. Next time, unarudi, unambuwa kuna anko yako, akuna biyashara ya IT. Tuanzishe kule ya computers. Then, tunakam, tunakonyesha simu zetu. We are operating phones. You've got to learn the principle of making moves without waiting for waves. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that he who observes the clouds will not plow. Because sometimes the best time to do something is when it appears as if it's the wrong time for that thing. Make moves. God will bring the waves. Make sure that you're always making moves, finding the new frontiers, building on the new frontiers, discovering new frontiers. If you observe the clouds, you will not till the land. The Bible says one motivation for laziness, that a lazy man says, there is a lion outside, I will not go. Sindio. A lazy man says that. There is a lion outside, I will not go. And not knowing that what he thought was a lion outside was an opportunity outside. If you make moves, God will make waves. If you make moves, God will bring the waves. Am I talking to somebody here? Fourthly, winners are managers of energy. Managers of energy. Managers of energy. Do you? The slothful man says, there is a lion in the way, and there is a lion in the streets, and there's a li they always see lions and lions and lions, so they never make moves. They stay at home and wait for the perfect opportunity when the lion will die. Fourthly, managers of energy. Victory requires energy management. The Bible says in the book of Luke, no man enters in the house of a strong man and takes his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Meaning to tell you, victory is determined by your strength. Strong-minded people, strong-willed people, strong leaders have more results. Eh? Have more results. No man enters into the house of a strong man unless he first binds the strong man. 
What is happening to us is that many of us, we waste our energy. The Bible says this, if any man is going to build a house, does he not first sit down and count the cost? Counting the cost is counting how much energy do I need? I'm teaching better than you're saying amen, by the way. I'm saying amen to myself. Most of us have got people who are energy wasters. They are draining. Insecure people are energy wasters. Hello? Energy wasters. If you want to become a victor, increase your strength. And one way to increase your strength is in avoid energy draining people. Avoid them. Hello? Avoid them. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless he does what first? Bind the strong man. Every area of life you want to enter, there are people there. How strong are you? When I'm talking about strength, I'm not talking about physical strength. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter number 5, chapter number 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the enemy. That is to tell you, God's armor only works based on how strong you are. Ephesians 6 verse number 10, right? So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So weaklings... With God's armor, cannot do a good battle. God's armor needs my strength. And that's why there are people who will say, I think I'm cursed. I think I'm cursed. It's because they are a weakling with God's armor. Armor? And these weaklings with God's armor, they cannot be able to withstand. So it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then verse number 11, what does it say? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. That is to tell you the devil is an attacker. He will attack, 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 attack. And if the devil is attacking and you have got God's armor but you're not strong as a person, that armor that you have cannot be able to advance your cause. I challenge everybody right now. It is the strength of the inner man. The Bible says this, in understanding, be what? Be men. Be strong in the Lord. 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 When the armor of God meets a strong man, they are able to put out any attack of the devil. The Bible says the enemy roams around to and fro. First Peter chapter number 5, looking for somebody to devour. Strong people do not get attacked. If today, God forbid, Kenya decided that we want to go and attack America, how many of us would be happy? The way we said we are attacking Somalia, we are going for Al-Shabaab, and the people felt, if, if today, God forbid, that we found ourselves that we need to combat, why would we not want to engage with them? Because we know, we, we know what we will see. Eh? The, if we say we are going to fight Russia. See, we soldiers, we are soldiers. See, we are going to declare refugee. We are going to get passport. Somalia will be safer than Kenya. Why? Because these people have been invested in their strength. And there's a principle that Ronald Reagan always used to advocate for. Ronald Reagan, praise God, is in the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 9. <laughs> Ronald Reagan used to say this, that the principle for democracy is peace through strength. The stronger you are, the more peaceful you shall be. Strong people don't get attacked. If the devil is constantly attacking you, I can only be still a little, little church. 
Aptosha niombea nikafika home. Nikasikia mapaka zimeanza kulia. If you are constantly being attacked, check your strength. Check your strength. Strong people don't get attacked. Ama? Strong people don't get attacked. If you are constantly being attacked, wo lalagi, si tunalala, wo natuambia manze, spiritual climate ya Nairobi me change, we notice, tunashanga. Si ni mvue na tusumbua na hizi lili. Si tunalala, tunakula, wo ujakula. One time I remember, so this lady anenda kupika food, akitupikia kikuja kuyombea, akaanza kwanza kuombea, penyeo ngombe vile lizaliwa. Akaanza kuombea ule mtu, ati unajua God alisema, I'll bless the work of your hands. So there are people who have curses. So everything unashika, the blessing of the curse inaingia. Wacha sasa ukate makucha, seme, hizo makucha zaku, usiwai kata makucha yangu kechini, zibebe zote. Mina kati ya msichana wa campus, nda muambia nafanya nina makucha kwa mifuku. What am I doing with nails in my pocket? Lakini wa msichana, hizo ndo mastori muna taka kutuambia. No anda mutaka singo. Asa, wanome umebeba makucha. Hizo makucha wandera zichote. Zichote, asa tumeka na makucha. You, you don't throw your nails. Atino kisha zinini. Endo kai kwa kona na mshumau zichome. Ai! Asa na shangai sasa hii ni kazi gani. This girl was beautiful on the outside, but bound on the inside. So you ask her, why, why do you do these things? Unajua, somebody told them these things. Sasa musianze kuomba, kukona 77 prayers, anakutolea folder ya maombi. Ini prayer, tunataka kuenda sasa. Prayer ya maombi. That's when you kujaga kwenyu, I pray my departing prayers. Na si junataka, ni zile ni meona ni kitembele ya watu. So I pray, atayangu ya kuenda na kuambia, no, let me pray for myself. Because unasikia hii sasa tunaombea gari, ushike taya, ushike nini. We as a managers of energy. Your time yote, you will not, let me tell you, you cannot bind all the demons on the earth. But you can be strong enough to keep all the demons on the earth from attacking you. But ukitaka kuzibind zote, wo ye. Wo utakuna sikezi matunda za watu. Oh, nanya lioa. People are having sex, having children. Getting married. Where bado tuna bind to? <laughs> You'll arrive in heaven, unmarried, unloved, miserable, tired, because you bound. Kama shetani alianguka na half a million, half, a three quarters of angels, heaven. Na uvu kona miaka CG26, umeanza kujipea kazi, ya kubind mutu wako millions of years old. Utachoka. So the only thing you can control is not the enemy, but you. And the only thing you can do is increase your strength. The stronger you become, the weaker he becomes. The Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation chapter number 10, they overcame him. They overcame him. Meaning the devil can be overcome. Sikila sa shetani, shetani, shetani. Oh, the devil this, or oh, the devil that. He can be overcome. They overcame him. And if they overcame him, you can overcome him. Hello? Hello? You can live a victorious life, but manage your energy. Manage your energy. Manage your energy. You can enjoy your life if you have managed your energy. Finally, hallelujah. Am I helping you? The last principle of leaders and victors is lead change. Don't allow change to lead you. Lead change. Lead change. Wow. Lead change. Lead change. Don't allow change to lead you. Some of us are as big as dinosaurs or the T-Rex, but you are not evolving. And if you do not evolve, change will lead you. And if change leads you, Change will erase you. Hello? Lead change. The biggest organizations in the world and the richest men on the earth, and, and you can go research this, the biggest organizations on the earth and the richest men on the earth are the people who began to do business before legislation for that business was formed. 
legislation came after their dominance. Huh? Huh? The law comes to make the ground fair. But victors and victory is not about being fair. By the time the ground is being leveled, you should have stamped your feet that they are leveling it for the 49% that are on the other side. Whether it is locally with the money transfer and the money bills and the money things, you'll find the company that came up with that idea and invested in that idea, by the time the laws around electronic money transfer are being formed, the business was already formed. They led change. Now you come up with your idea, oh, I want to get into this. Well, first of all, before you have a money transferring, what, 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 you need to pay this amount of money as license. Hey, but there were no licenses before for this. Then you need to deposit this money in this. And then you need to deposit this money in this. Even in the gambling game in Kenya, the biggest sports person or whatever, they came and brought away that you can gamble with your phone. By the time the bigger ones, the batteries and the others are coming, the big one is already thumped and stamped on the ground. Those who lead change dominate. Those who are led by change will be dominated. Lead change. If you're doing music, lead change. If you're doing art, lead change. If you're doing business, lead change. Be the person who initiates the disturbance towards freedom and growth and dominance. Lead change. By the time the laws around social media were being done, Facebook was already big. But because many of us like to play safe, like to play secure, we always play small. Because when the lines have already been drawn, the ground has already been reduced. They've already drawn the line. Victors and people who lead a victorious life the Bible uses this word, blessed, thanks be to God who leads us into triumph. Triumph is a leadership process. It is how you lead that, how, that determines how you triumph. It doesn't say blessed be God who triumphs and then calls us. God is working by how he's leading you and leading you and leading you. I don't know where you are in your life. But God can be the one leading you to triumph. David came to a ground and he found a giant talking big and calling them names. And David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a driving factor? And he was told, this man shall be done for this and this and this and this. And David said, who is this who defies the armies of our God? Goliath appeared as if he could never be conquered. But it is those who kill giants that are rewarded by kings. But those who kill small things, they stay around average people. My job today is to make you dream big, think big, act big, and to go for big. Stop becoming a victim of where you are. Stop accepting the label of what people have called you. Lead change. You know, nowadays, I get disturbed by how what wanna celebrate ghetto. Najwa sasa sisi wa se tu kikwa gabado ukom tani. Ukom tani vile tukwa gatuna kau na sisi goda metuam tani. And nobody's talking about school. Okay, you can be in the hood, but as God advances you, you cannot be an advocate for hoodood. Could I get to come a hoodood? You cannot be an advocate. You can now say, hey, after I left the hood, I took up Nikanza Kusoma. You cannot say and be proud that Munajua say misi Kusoma lakini ni metoboa. Mm-mm. Because soon and soon, somebody with your talent, namasomo, will erase you. Talent is common. Don't be cheated. Talent is common. Talent is common. You can't be 
thumping your chest. Oh, wasemu najua mimi sikuagi nini nini. Somebody with your talent will raise you. So you, you can start at the bottom, but don't celebrate and recruit us to come and shrink to your level. That right now watu wamesoma wanafilu wa siongeju wa kusoma. Everybody is looking for a sad story. Now those who don't have sad ones, mnatha kwekela your great grandmother. I was given to the devil. Na grandmother ako was a career civil servant. Anashanga, hii mambo yako sasa hii. Na amelala vizuri huko a Lego, unamsumbua. Anashanga sasa hii ni nini naitiwa. Sisi, mimi nilikuwa hii, na huya likuwa hii. Lead change. The ground is not going to remain the same forever. Before, a pastor was just a preacher. Now a pastor must be a leader. He must be a lawyer. He must be an engineer. He must be into production. He must be, and constantly. And so if you are limited in how you are leading, just because you are doing well in one area, you are going to be erased by change. God bless you. Let's rise up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.